Hello and welcome to another edition of Extra Connections here on JLJ Media. I am the JLJ of JLJ Media, James Watt Jr. And Christmas music is very lucrative. I know for a fact I have four Christmas songs out every year. They do good business for me. So doing Christmas songs is a big deal. It's a short time of the year, but it can actually be very memorable. And this group has a Christmas EP out. So good luck to you guys. You have some good, some good stuff coming your direction. It's called Like It's Christmas. <laughs> And it came out this month, and there was a song out called Something in the Air. It's a video on YouTube. Go ahead and check it. I'll tell you where you can find all that if you have not heard that yet there. I want them to each tell me what their names are so you guys can see their faces and names. I don't have a, a thing to do that. Um, and, it was just, and they're called the Trills, but I want you to each start from the back. Who are you? Say your name. My name is Will. My name is Missy. My name is Nick. I'm Aaron. I'm Leroy. And we're missing Catherine today. I don't say, yeah, there's another person. I'm like, she's not here. So hello to her. I hope she's okay. <laughs> she's, uh, she's okay. Are you sure she's okay? Shall we look over here and see if she's she okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, shh, don't say anything quiet. Yeah, right. But she's fine. That's good. Okay, well, good. Well, glad you, the five of you could make it um, and represent the group. Congratulations on your new EP. Um, Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, and it's good. And it's, you guys are an acapella group. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start. This is what I'm going to start. You're on TikTok. I follow you guys on TikTok. Uh, I'm on TikTok. Uh, you guys are TikTok stars. Somehow I'm a TikTok star too, apparently. Uh, it's kind of weird. I, I got videos that went viral, really bizarre. Um, but I want to ask you a question because this happened to me. So I had a couple of videos that went viral. I had one where I put bread in the refrigerator and that went really viral. And I'm that guy who put bread in the refrigerator. So that's just me. Um, and, um, and, but I thought at first when TikTok started, it seemed like it was this whole separate thing where it was this magical world where what happened to TikTok, TikTok stays in TikTok. I was like, who are these people? And what are, who are watching? I mean, what's going on? But then I realized this year, it seems different. It's like now it's starting to spill over into the rest of the world. So is that happening for you? Cause you guys have like millions of followers. Is that happening for you guys too? Anyone can answer first. You know what? I think didn't TikTok started as a different name. Um, and at that time, I kind of was, I personally, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get on TikTok. Like anybody who's anybody like stays away from TikTok. And it's so funny because um, now it takes over my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, yeah. Just did a complete uh, 180. So, <laughs> yes, um, yes, Nick, yeah. I did the same thing. Nick, I did the same thing. I was like, who are these for young kids? What's going on? And we're uh -huh. all like, oh my God, where's I get my next video? And whose video is uh -huh. this? And just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling for hours. Yeah. Uh, like we do something else. But I mean, but, but you guys, I mean, it's, it's just starting to translate into over to uh, Instagram followers. It's happening to you. I mean, it's starting to happen that way for you guys. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, a lot of it is timing too, and just making sure that we're not just sticking to only TikTok but investing the same amount of time to the other platform so that those who do populate the other side or go to Instagram or go to our YouTube, they're seeing the same trills in all those different areas. That's when, that's when they get to really know us when they're seeing us consistently in the different areas. Who's handling all that? Who's handling the social media for you guys? So Will and Catherine actually both take over that end. Okay, very good. So Will and Catherine, I ask you guys, so it must, it's, it's a, it's a full-time job, isn't it? I mean, because I know for myself it is to like make sure you hit the different areas, make sure that the videos are all, so I mean, it's, it's, it's like a full-time job. Yeah, it's also just being mindful, like making sure you're keeping track of what's happening on TikTok because it's sometimes completely different from what's going on on Instagram and like the things that are trending on one side or what's popular one, um, it's not always the same back and forth. So just being, um, just keeping track of like what's really happening on each different platform is super important also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know with, with Will, especially you just, you can't turn it off because if you turn it off, you lose it. I mean, if you think about it, when you're really grinding on content, if something good pops up or a trend pops up, you have to know it. And if you don't know it, you miss out on it. Yep. And if you miss out on it, you miss out on views. So it's, you can never really turn off that kind of mindset if you want it to progress forward. Yeah, yeah. Someone was told us that it's, it's a beast that you need to feed and like you mm -hmm. can't stop feeding it. it. Social media is just something that you just need to continue to feed into in order for you to grow or even stay where you are. Well, you guys are, you guys are kind of funny too on there. And so, I, and I, so I'm curious because you have this thing you do sometimes now. There's this thing you guys do sometimes that makes me kind of laugh. And, and so I'm just wondering, how, is that staged or not where you're like, sing three, three, three bars for this or sing something from this show. If I threw something at you, could you possibly do something really quick? 
100% could. <laughs> yeah, that's I me. Mean, that's what we do. Now, if we know the song, definitely. Now, yeah. if you tell us a song <laughs> we don't know. Well, I'm saying, okay, I'm doing do right now because I'm going to ask you guys if you know a song. Um, Sondheim just passed away. Do you know any songs from yeah. him? He did so many, he did so many different things from somewhere and all this stuff. Do you know one? You guys know one? Do y'all know Giants in the Sky from Into the Woods? Any Into the Woods songs? I, I love Into the Woods. I love that. I love that show. I love it so so much. He's our theater major. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I'm with you. Into the Woods is so good. The second half is so good compared to the first. What happens afterwards is so funny. A uh, great See, song. See, I was Into the Woods Junior. It didn't uh, end that way. It was very PG. <laughs> um, <laughs> question mark. <laughs> all of us were like <laughs> that's no hilarious idea. oh my god that's silly that's hilarious because yeah because yeah but it's it's fun folks um what okay, can we do this okay what do you know any do you know anything from a chorus line i do not you're really throwing the theater at us <laughs> or, 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 or family opera still throwing the theater at us <laughs> okay <laughs> I know we're gonna, we're gonna find we're gonna find one. So I'm just really curious because you guys do it. It's so funny. I'm gonna do it. Okay, you guys, you guys give, us a, give us something that's popular on TikTok. Hmm. I know or just the a popular song. One of my ones is six, but I don't know if you know any songs from six. They're really good right now. They're really big right now. Um, so think. Okay, <laughs> man, I feel like we're like. Oh do we listen to music? <laughs> okay, well, here we go. No, here we go. Well, you guys did Greatest Showman. You did one song. Do you know another song greatest from the Greatest Showman? You did one song once. What song do you remember us doing? You guys did, um, oh my God, I, this, I just I watched that too long ago. Um, did From Now On. We did done From Now On. That's what, that's what you did, yeah. that's what you did. Yeah. yeah. We've done A Million Dreams. A Million Dreams. Let's um, do, um, I don't know, oh what's no. the song from? from... There's just, just, just a couple of bars of it. That's all, we don't do the whole song, just a couple of bars. What's that you want to do a song that we have not done yet? Oh, okay, said, sure. Yeah, just, oh. Just, an exclusive, sure. We'll take that. I'll take that's even better. I'll take it back. That's even better. Stars? Stars. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, okay. So what if we? Uh, so what if we? All right, ready? So what if we? We write stars. Say you were made to be mine. Nothing can keep us apart. I'll be the one you were meant to find. It's up to you. And it's up to me. No one can say that we meant to be. No one can rewrite the stars. Say you were made to be mine tonight. <laughs> So good. Oh, it's so good. Like it's so good. Okay, so okay, so I have to ask, you guys get compared to pentatonics at all? Yes. You know what we get yes. a lot? Because you, you have the beatboxing thing in there with the a cappella stuff. So I was I'm wondering. We get uh Walmart, Walmart pentatonics. Yeah. <laughs> and um, honestly, I'll take it. You know what? I'll take it because I'll take it. Sure, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Here's my thing: is you don't compare. You don't compare things that actually don't have merit to be compared to. Like I'm not going to compare some elementary school uh, acapella group to Pentatonix because it's like they're just different leagues, which is okay because they're an elementary school group. But the fact that people are like, oh, this is another version of Pentatonix, it's like I think people are starting to get to know us as not that. Um, like we haven't seen that comment actually in a very long time. It's been actually I don't remember the last time we've seen it, but to be even known as someone that could be in that same conversation. It's it's humbling for us and it's cool to see that we're doing something that people wanna hear and that they could even say, I would listen to this the same way that I would listen to a pentatonic song. So that's pretty cool for us. Well, man, my thing is acapella is something that's very special and it's been around for a long time from barbershop quartets on, you know, on and there's a lot of groups who would do a little bit of acapella. Like there's, there's a group called Shy that did a song in the nineties where they started out seeing acapella in the song and then it goes into actual song. Um, I think Boris did a few acapella things here and there over the year. I mean, like, yeah. it's, a, it's a very special type of music because you literally are the music. Right. Yeah. Can, can you guys talk about that a little bit, about, about, about choosing to do acapella? Yeah, I can, I can say this one first. So I used to play trumpet growing up. Like, i fifth generation of brass players. So, I, of course, I played trumpet. And that was my whole family. Everyone played tuba, trombone, trumpet, et cetera. And when I was like 12 or 13, I realized that acapella was uh, an art form. Like when the sing-off season two, I think it was, uh, when that was airing, I was watching that and I was obsessed with the art form, just the fact that those kind of sounds could come from the mouth. To me, it was just one of the most fascinating things. I, I kind of realized from an early age that I had no aptitude for singing. 
So I could not sing at all. Like, and my dad was even like, you should probably stick to beatboxing. So, so I, I, I really want to do acapella. So I practiced really, really hard kind of throughout middle high school uh, for the beatboxing and then in college shows form. So I was actually able to use my, my art to create vocal music. Yeah. And, and wait, so you, wait, you're Aaron, right? Correct, correct. So Aaron, that's, that's very interesting because I have a friend who's a beatboxer. His name is Joshua Silverstein. He beatboxed on the show, um, uh, that Mike show he did for a while. People were like, they were fighting each other, battling each other. Uh, mm. And it was, it was on one of those stations. But beatboxing yeah. is its own, it's its own. I mean, from when I grew up, of course, it was, you know, the mm. beatbox and all these folks, you know, in the in six minutes and all, all that stuff back in the day in the eighties. Um, that's all different thing too, but you're right. Yes, you don't have to sing the beatbox, but you're in a group that sings a cappella. I mean, that's, that's very interesting. So your parts are always, you just know what your parts are, I guess, right? I mean, it's, it's beatboxing to their singing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we have the grooves we want to do. We have the special sounds I want to throw in. We have the form of the track. So it's really just trying to figure out how to create a piece really past the four or six part harmony, whatever they're doing. And how do I round out the sound in the auxiliary and the drums kind of behind it? Um, so I kind of make my parts based on that. Yeah. Oh, I was saying, so you got your beatbox, you must be like drummers, you're the backbeat. Exactly, right? yeah. So I'm, I'm the bass. And so just like any yeah. other oh, radio. Yeah. Here's, here's what he does, he goes, well, I'm the bass. So I'm like, yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so I'm the <laughs> bass <laughs> and. <laughs> voice man, I understand. You're like, yeah, I'm the bass. I'm like, yeah, I heard that already. Yeah, <laughs> so, so as the bass, the same way that you would see in a, you know, normal mainstream band is you have the bass and the drums as the rhythm section. So we function the same way where we're not just singing as you would in barbershop where we're all just singing, you know, five part harmony or four part harmony, where we're just singing the same words together. We function the same way that a regular instrument band would. So we have pads, we have, we have two or three people that are singing just oohs and ahs in the background to fill out those chords. Then we might have a soloist that are singing more of the melody, the lyrics um, that you would know from the song. But that's why I was attracted to acapella because it's more than just playing in a band. I had played in bands, you know, growing up. But to be able to sit in a room with no instruments, sit like we literally sat in the dorm room when we first started, um, but to sit in a room, not need a drum, not need a piano, not need a guitar, not need an amp or anything, but just sit and just say, hey, you sing this, you sing that, you do this type of beat, I'm going to do this type of bass, bass uh, run and just see how it sounds. That's a different type of art form that's very new and recent to as far as the, the music culture. Now, acapella has been around forever, but this idea of having a beatbox or having a bass doing drum and bass type things, that's very new. So it's really cool to see how we can alter our voices and use what we have just in our bodies to still give the same type of energy that you would see a full band do. Yeah, Missy, so you and Catherine are ladies of the group. Yes, all this, All this Ooh. men energy around. So how do you guys, how do you guys handle all that? Honestly, I, I love Catherine and we work very well together because as much as we're the same, we're completely opposites. Um, and I think we all agree with that. Oh, like, yeah. it's, 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 like, like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's so funny how our dynamic works and just the six of us in general, um, with acapella, if you go down, you go down together. <laughs> um, and so we're all just so tightly knit. We've all started saying things at the same time. It's a little terrifying. <laughs> um, but just our brain connections and having Catherine with me, it's, it's awesome. She's okay. the best That's girl partner ever. <laughs> Cool. And, and so then, Will, what is your part in the, in the group? I kind of do whatever they ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> Fill this part. Fill this part. Fill this part. You're like, that. Just sure. You're He's like, the sure. baritone of the group. That's like it's and different. he does it well. <laughs> also, baritone is exactly what he just said. Baritone is Pratt. Anyone who's a baritone listening, you know that baritones are just whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever your part is, is what you're seeing. You might sing tenor parts, you might sing bass parts, but yeah. So Will just carries it all. <laughs> so Will, so Will, are you the most versatile of the group then, we say? Not by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you something. I'm trying to give you a little something, but okay, that's fine. That's fine. You know he is so very versatile though. You know what's yeah. so funny? <laughs> Aaron has the highest range of anybody. Yes. Oh. Yep, the beatboxer can go from the lowest to the highest yeah. out of anybody. Wow. Yeah, he, he he sells himself short. He can sing. 
He definitely his his yeah. art form is beatboxing, but he can sing. But he well, because when you're beatboxing, you also manipulate your voice in so many different like weird ways. So his just vocal cords are just used to doing weird things. So he can sing crazy high. Like we'll be just like playing around singing a super high note, and Aaron will walk in and go, and I, I won't even try to do it because I can't as the bass. <laughs> but he'll just come in and sing the highest note. We're just like, okay, well that's cool. Yeah, Thanks. whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Chandelier by Sia. Oh yeah. That's oh, wow. him. He will sing Chandelier by Sia. <laughs> Probably every day. Now, now I want to hear it, but that's like, I want to do it. I want to do it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. But now, Nick, now, now, Nick, wait a minute. Nick, so, you are, so you are, are you the theater guy, the group? Are you like, ladies, they were saying that a little earlier. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So, uh, no, because no, now before you probably were on stage, you sang to actual music, music, right? And then now this is kind of a different thing. How's it different? Or the same? How's it the same or different? Um, I think I can speak for everybody. I don't know about Aaron, but I think everyone has been in choir before um, okay. joining college. So mm -hmm. I started um, chamber choir my freshman year. Of high, actually, before that, middle school choir. Um, and I kind of eased my way into musical theater. My friends were like, "You're you're you're a shoe in for this part." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "I don't think I can act, but let's let's go for it." And then I ended up. Uh, trying to major in it. Uh, I'm an acting major at Towson now. And yeah, I kind of, my world's kind of blended together. So I'm still doing acting and I'm still doing music and um, yeah, still doing musicals. Doing both, doing both. Don't, don't stop, doing both. Exactly. Nowadays, he's phenomenal at it all. Yeah. Stop. So I would say yeah. nowadays a hyphenate is good. Uh, some slashes and things, they're, it's all, do it, <laughs> do it all. You can do it all at this point. Don't let that, don't let that yeah, <laughs> differently. So I got so I got to hear. So okay, how did you guys? I mean, you guys were all in college, but how did the six of you literally come together as a group? Lots of little miracles. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, so Aaron and I, we our freshman year in 2015, we met at an open mic night. Catherine and some other people met at Target randomly that same night. Just miraculously, none of us knew each other at this time. And then just so happened that week we all met at the same dorm room. Wait, 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 don't go back to the target thing. How, how, you guys met, you guys met at you said at, at the open mic, which makes sense. That yeah. kind of cool. But the others met at Target. Were you shopping? Were you working there? Like what I mean when you they just were at Target. When I when I say little miracles, like the most random and just weird things, just okay. random places. We met at random places around campus, outside of campus. And this happened that next Tuesday during that week. Somehow we were all texting each other in separate conversations and we ended up at the same dorm room and we're like, hey, we all like to sing. Let's sing together real quick. Oh, you like acapella? I like acapella too. Hey, let's try to make an acapella arrangement and sing something. Let's do the talent show. Then we do the talent show. We win that talent show. And we're like, okay, let's keep this going. And so throughout the years in different audition, auditions, people graduating, people leaving. So yeah. Will came in first after the first semester. And then we had Nick after that next year. And then Missy came in um, in 2018. And we've been working strong ever since then. Wow. So you yeah. were kind of the, the, were the, the nucleus beginner, so to speak, the longest? No, or? it was Aaron, me, Catherine, and another member. Okay. Yeah we, were, yeah, we were the first one. Can you imagine if Catherine was like, I, eh, I don't need to go to Target today. <laughs> right, like, no, literally. Imagine? She's like, I'll get trash bags tomorrow. It's always time <laughs> to go to Target. We always want to go to Target. Hello. I was there yesterday. We always go to Target. Right. Period. There was no conversation of not going to Target. <laughs> no. I was like, is she there now? Is that why she can't make it today? Uh, <laughs> she couldn't make it today because she's at Target right now, actually. She's like, I need, I need eggnog. I need eggnog. <laughs> Like, I can't, can't do that. Group there. <laughs> just, yeah, she's forming another one right now. She's sweet. Yep. <laughs> you had no idea, did you? Yeah. Um, but that, that's why I, I love. Well, I just call it. There's no. There's no such thing as coincidence. Um, there's no such thing as accidents. Really, it's all divine intervention. It's like it's supposed to happen this way. You guys were supposed to come together. Um, yep. So now, okay. So is this your first kind of major release, the Christmas EP? You know, yeah, as the trills, this is our first project. We've done singles. Right. We've so, singles. So why Christmas? Why was it as your first kind of, you know, your first EP? Why Christmas? Who doesn't love Christmas? Okay. Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's acapella and Christmas just always mend together really well. So we we knew we wanted to do a mid to longer like length project. And our manager was like, how about Christmas? Mm -hmm. So we were like, why not? And we started yeah. recording and we ended up having a blast. So. The thing about Christmas music and acapella is you like hearing different arrangements of the same songs. Like there's only so many Christmas songs that you hear on the radio. 
but you hear those same songs over and over, but you like to hear the different versions. Like just yesterday, I heard Oh Holy Night three times in a row on the, ra on the radio, but it was like Celine Dion's and it was Mariah Carey's and it was some other like pop groups, Oh Holy Night, but it's just people like to hear it. So we thought we'd add our style, we'll be at our trills style to to the mix. One of my favorite actual um, Oh Holy Nights is actually by Ruben Studdard and Clay Aiken. Check that mm -hmm. out. Yeah. It's really good. So you guys do Carol the Bells, you're a Mima Mr. Grinch, which is kind of funny. Santa Claus has come to town, we go to the name of that. I mean, you have a song called Like It's Christmas and it's something in the air. I gotta tell you something, because you guys are gonna be performing with uh, Straight No Chaser, correct? Yes. Right. yes. I said, I'm not, no offense to you guys, I, I haven't heard your version yet. But my but their version of Carol the Bells I play every Christmas. I love the version. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and okay, right okay Missy, up. say something. Go ahead, Missy, say something. No, I'm just so excited for you to hear ours. I want to hear. I want to hear yours. I'm gonna. I'm like, I love. I love yeah. their version. So I'm like, I love. Yeah. I love that song anyway. Like you said, there's so many arrangements of it. I love that song. Oh, and yeah. Their songs. But it's funny you go performing with them. I'm going. I. You guys, you guys, you guys should do a Carol Bells off or something. Both of you guys just do. <laughs> Well, ours awesome. isn't just Carol the Bells. It also mm -hmm. has my favorite things mashed up inside of it. Yeah. So, oh, real? Oh, yeah. so now Carol we're Bells. a theater group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it gives it gives you a new new vibe to that song. You'll see when you when you hear it. It's a it's a very different energy behind it than you've heard before. I like that. Um, you're a me with Mr. Grinch. Why that one? It's a fun one. Like that's exactly why it's a that's fun exactly one. Why. <laughs> I think when we were thinking of songs, we were thinking of what songs could we spice up more than like what we've already heard. And so we took that song, Your Meme Wants the Grinch, and we were just like, let's let's slow it down a little bit, make it a little bit more, more groove to it, a little bit more drive to it. Um, so Will actually took that arrangement, Will arranged that one and just demolished it. Uh, okay. well, I, want, I want to ask a little question about arranging because that because you're right, there's a million versions of this song. How do you make it your own? So what was like the first thing you thought of? Obviously slowing it down as well. What was the first thing you thought of? Say, okay, we're gonna make this a trills version of this song. Yeah. And what we discussed that we wanted it to be kind of different, the same like traditional Grinch, but kind of have our own vibe to it, our own groove. So I listened to like every version of the Grinch that exists and kind of thought of like, <laughs> what do I want? What's missing? Like, mm. what can we do that's mm -hmm. different in this? Mm. And kind of like, mm. what I would do is I would play it and then record over the original track of like what I thought should go there, like what would be cool and what would sound good, just fitting in there and mm. filling in those gaps that I kind of wanted to get the vibe we were going for. So you know that song by heart now, especially, you know, I'm sure you've heard every version. <laughs> I know that I dreamt the song, I, I eat to the song, I know the song by heart, don't you? Yeah, yeah he's like, I know that, I know that song. Um, and Santa Claus Come to Town, another, another uh, old time favorite, um, uh, fan favorite, why, why that one? Yeah, we've been doing Santa Claus for three or four years now. Actually, one of the first Christmas tunes we ever learned. Uh, okay. Back, I think probably our sophomore or junior year of college, we were kind of called upon to do a local TV special here in Baltimore, and we needed some Christmas tracks. So we did Santa Claus Coming to Town, and what else did we do? All I want, um, for, all Christmas. I want for Christmas is you. So we went with just classics, you know, just really people pleasers. I think they helped us choose the songs. And that one kind of stuck. It was kind of the fun, the upbeat, the mm -hmm. in-your-face and we kind of uh, changed it over time to make it more with our current sound. And also make it a little bit more complex on the drums, on the solo, et cetera. Um, so we really just knew that we had to throw it on. Mm -hmm. Santa just keeps coming back. <laughs> every, every, <laughs> every, <does. laughs> every year. And exactly. Okay, so I gotta ask you this question because I have a lot of close, actually close friends and business people I work with in the, industry, in the entertainment industry who are from Baltimore. Uh, I, asked, I asked them this question. I asked every Baltimore person I know. And I know so many. I mean, I literally know so many in LA. I did watch The Wire, one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, why, why is Baltimore hot when it comes to talent? For some reason, a lot of talent is brewed in Baltimore. There's a, there's a lot of talent in Baltimore. <sighs> it's something in the air. It's <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh, I love it. See, Nick's on it. Nick's on it. He's like, thank good night, everybody. Thank you, Nick. Good night. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Baltimore is the state that's not really a state, but it's still like its own place. I like guess it's, it's te te technically a city of Maryland, but it's its own, it's its own energy. It's its own. Right. It's its own. Really, its own community. Um, and I think there's just different influences in Baltimore. Just somehow, people from everywhere end up in Baltimore somehow. Um, I don't think none of us 
grew up in Baltimore, actually. I think and none of us mm-hmm. were born here, but we all just ended up here. Um, and I think that that's the case for a lot of people. There's a lot of inspiration here, a lot of art, beautiful art here, a lot of amazing artists. And I think it's just an energy. I mean, Nick was joking, but it really is a true thing. There's something in the air where there's a lot of creative people and a lot of inspiring people where you just are feeding off of each other. Um, and the surrounding cities around us too, there's a lot to feed off of too. So I think that's why Baltimore is just the hub for a lot of greatness. There's a lot of art and a lot of heart. Yeah. Like I, that's not even a joke. I promise I'm not joking, but there is, there's a lot of art and there's a lot of heart. And I feel like that really resembles us. I mean, we love making art. We love hearts. Heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could have worded that differently, but you get it. You get I, it. I get, no, I do get it. <laughs> no, I, get, I get it. No, I know, but my, cause my thing is that there are a lot of people I'm saying, I know a lot of folks who are either got jobs in Baltimore or from Baltimore, but they're, they're, they're doing great things in the industry. Um, like this is a city that I've never been there. I mean, I, I've been to other parts of the DMV. I've been, I've been around, you know, DC and all Virginia and all that, but I've never been to Maryland. Um, I've, I've been through it, but I've never really been to Baltimore. So I'm like, I know I have to, I have to come. Yeah, come, to on down. Yeah, come. come on down, visit. We'll get some crabs. crabs. We'll I love good. crab. I do. I love crab. I, I would love if you crab. haven't been to Baltimore, you have not had crabs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't want crabs, but I mean the crab. Yes, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're you, set, you set it up. You set it up. I'm sorry. You set it up. I did. I did. I did. Knock on the heart. Oh my god. <laughs> so bad. But no. But well, yeah. No. I know what you mean. I mean. I. I would love. I. Yeah. I. I I'm an eater. So that's. I love seafood. Um. So you know, it'd be great. Um. But I just. I was just like wondering about those. That's kind of crazy. So okay. Well, actually, each of you tell me where you're from originally. So start with you. Well, where are you from originally? I'm from Gaithersburg, Maryland. So Maryland, can you? Okay. I'm ironically also from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, just wait, it keeps coming. <laughs> yep. I am from Germantown, Maryland, so right across the street. Yep. I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, but I was born in Seattle, Washington. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm also from Gaithersburg, Maryland, literally like two <laughs> minutes away from where we'll live, too. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So you, the, the three of you didn't know each other when you were in Gaithersburg. You didn't know each other, right? You go to state so, school. Right? All right. So get, get this. This is how... It's a journey. I it's love a journey. It. I love it. So Will and I actually did know each other. I actually knew his siblings more than I knew him um, while we were, we actually went to the same church. Now we went to a really big church. So it was very easy oh, to okay. know each other, but also not like know, know each other. Yeah. Um, and Missy had no idea who she was, but I knew her sister and her older brother, her older brother and sister, but still didn't know she existed at all. Um, and then we all came to Towson. I had no idea Will was at Towson, Towson University in Baltimore. And obviously I had no idea that Missy was coming to Towson a couple of years later, but just so happened that we were auditioning that second semester and Will, I had seen at this um, church group on campus and I was like, oh, Will, should audition? I think someone else told you to audition and you audition and it was like, oh, we need this man because this man has some pipes. And then later on, Missy came in and I'm like, I recognize your last name, also recognize you. Then on Facebook, realized that I know her older brother and sister. And yeah, it's a small world. You guys are like a family, basically. You're a family. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, oh, we yeah. are. <laughs> You're a chosen family. I mean, that's what it is. Six of you guys are a chosen family. I mean, that's just absolutely. Kind of... oh, where's Catherine? Sorry, where's Catherine from? She's not here. Where's she from? Pasadena, Maryland. Oh, so you're Maryland, Maryland. So, so you guys yeah, are all Maryland. You're East Coasters. You guys are all East Coasters. A whole different flavor than us, than us nuts out here in California. Except for Aaron in Seattle. <laughs> and in Seattle, I know it's great. You went from so your family, did you grow up in Seattle at all? Or did you No, so only a few years. My dad was military, so we moved over here. You said Annapolis, right? So that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Military. I mean, I mean, speaking of military, how do they feel about you singing? Do they I mean you went to college? Did they feel that your parents like you're crazy? Or are they like, this is great? My my dad was a military musician, actually. Okay. So he loved that I had an art form. Um, that's where I learned how to perform music. And he always drilled it into me from a young age to, if you want to do performance, have a strong backup plan. So of course I majored in economics. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, that where it works, it could work for you. Which is why he manages all of our business. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, that's actually very smart. This is a business. This is a business. It is. Mm-hmm. The study economics. People buying and selling, so supply and demand. Right. All that stuff. I went to college in the Stone Age, but I mean, I do have degrees. I mean, it was like a long time ago, way back in the way. We had stone tablet. No I, you I, I ran to What? I said you got them when they mattered. 
I, I guess I, I don't I don't know if it was a long you guys probably weren't even born yet, but yes, I did go to college and study some economics back then. It was the eighties. It was crazy. Um well, I'm very excited for you guys. I, I just really think that, I mean, just even me and I guess have a great energy. Um, and I think you guys are going to go far. And so I'm going to say this now on camera. Don't forget me when you get big. <laughs> never. 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 You got your own music coming out. You better not forget us. <laughs> uh, exactly. So we remember each other and support each other. And yeah. Yes. Well, you have to come back. You guys are welcome to come back on anytime. Any releases, any album stuff coming out, any songs, come back on and, and promote to my folks. Because I think you guys are, I think you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. That's a great. So, pleasure. Yeah, good for you guys. So tell folks where they can find you. Find you. This is your chance to promote the F out of yourselves. Go ahead. Tell everybody everything. Tell them all. Go. Yeah. We're on Instagram at The Trills Music. We're on TikTok at The Trills. You can find us on YouTube, The Trills. Pretty much anytime you type in The Trills, we'll be there. Um, yeah, we're, we have a lot in the works right now. A couple of music videos coming out this month. Uh, stay tuned. Yeah, definitely go listen to the EP, Like It's Christmas, on Spotify, Apple Music. All that. Make sure you look up the trails like it's Christmas. Oh, wait, no, wait a minute. So what is the trails? What is that from? So, yeah. <laughs> so when we, obviously we were at Towson, Towson University. So we're like, what's a, an alliteration with Towson? Towson, what's another musical word that has T? And so we thought the trails, but also for some reason, every, everyone that year was having on their shirt saying stay trail or I oh, stay Oh yeah, trail. that word. Yeah. I thought I was like, wait, I heard that word before. Okay. Yeah. I was a word. So it, it's like, True and real, just that was a slang word that everyone was using. So trill, and then also the musical term trill, just like fast moving notes up and down. And so we're like, let's make ourselves the Towson trills. And then once most of us graduated, we decided to become the trills. That's okay. No, that's cool. I like that. Very cool. Now, now, now I get it. <laughs>